uh, the uh, uh, events. By the way, I'm trying to, per feedback from last time, I'm trying to post these, um, these lectures beforehand. They are preliminary versions, and so some slides have been added here and there and so on. But it gives you some opportunity to flip through as I'm doing it and flip back, maybe more germane, to what I did a few slides ago, so in case you missed a step. Okay? So I'm going to be talking about events in any logic. Um, and I actually made a few, few changes to this um, since I posted it, I believe. Um, so I want to remind you folks um, that when we were working with stop and flow models in, in classic system dynamics, um, there's a, a schedule, as it were, um, by which uh, the, the software solves the model. Solve is, is a term that, that mathematicians would use for it. We would say simulate the model, perhaps. But uh, the point is we're running the model, and time is advancing during that evolution. It's advancing in a monotonic way, step to step to step. And uh, in the simplest scheme called Euler integration, these are fixed size steps, run to cut integration, can have variants that are fixed, variants that are variable size. Um, and for each time step, we're going to be computing the flows and computing the, the, the updates, the stocks, the accumulations um, that, that occur in the model, and updating it across the entire model. Um, so here we're going through a fixed set of steps. And for each step, we update the model state. Update the model stuff. state. Update the model state. With, with, within an agent-based model in any logic, and in fact, more generally in any logic, for I believe any of the three types of major types of simulation supports, it jumps from event to event. Okay? Um, and uh, that affords a great economy um, of, of effort when we have a multi-time scale model with some events going on at a very fine time scale occasionally in a sort of punctuated way. Maybe you'll have a sudden outbreak and you have to simulate really, really finely on the order of half a day or something. And then you may have long periods of stasis where you can go from event to event over the time period of months. So it's a more flexible scheme. And in fact, any logic has invested quite a bit of effort in a quite sophisticated so-called scheduler and, and underlying schedule to allow this to happen. Um, it turns out that there's some deep um, mathematical issue with differential algebra algebraic equations, which are made um, if you can uh, solve different types of problems in this way. It's a very powerful, more general scheme. Um, there's a process called the scheduler, which takes sort of the opportunity to go from event to event. And these events generally, in contrast to stock and flow models, the events within an agent-based model are specific often to particular objects. So for example, one agent may have an event associated with it that perhaps represents his birthday. And, you know, it has to update some information. Another event may represent um, an agent's recovery from infection. And when that event fires, that agent updates. It's not updating the entire model in a monolithic way like it is in a stock and flow model. Instead, it's updating those pieces that are germane to that event. Now, we've seen some implicit events already. So with transitions, we've seen fixed rate transitions. Um, there's some fixed rate of 0.01, perhaps. And there's a Poisson arrival process. There's a certain chance for unit time that 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 uh, transition will fire. Time out events, events which fire off after a fixed amount of time, say after you enter a state. There's conditional events, events that are conditional on some criteria. There's message transmission or reception events. Perhaps this, this is better phrased as message reception events. So when you get, you get a, a new event uh, and it'll wake you up. Or fire off an event that schedules an event for the receiver. When you start a model, we just saw that. Where did we see the model start event? We just saw it within five to ten minutes back. Where did we see, where did we handle a start event? In the main. Yeah, in the main, the startup code for main. When the model starts up, <coughs> it does something. So we handled that event by sending a message to someone 
I randomly chose the person's model saying you're in bed. When you stop a model, this in event which goes off. We term these, I term these in this class implicit events. They're not reified as an object. They're not, they're not represented explicitly on your screen as, oh, there's an event. We're going to see there are this class of explicit events that are actually shown graphically in your model as events. But these are implicit events, and they're events nonetheless. Okay? And any logic schedules them. Any logic handles them. Okay? Um, so at any given time, there's a schedule, and it keeps track of the number of queued events, the number of events that are waiting for handling. And events get added to the schedule. Maybe I, I've been sick, and I infect someone here, and now they have an event scheduled for them to actually you know, uh, develop the infection and then later for them to recover. And events get deleted from the schedule. The most obvious way for them to get deleted is they get handled. So I, I have an event for my recovery that eventually gets handled and, and it's cleared off the schedule after it's handled. Um, so we say it's fired off the event, I've handled it and it's done. Um, but sometimes another mutually exclusive event preempts them. For example, maybe a person is infected, excuse me, if, uh, if a person is in, oh, okay, that's, that's a strange statement. Uh, a person, um, for example, could die before they recover from an infection. Um, so I'm not sure what I had in mind there. So a person dies uh, before they recover from infection um, might be an event which occurs. Those are two competing events. They're two competing risks. And one could occur and therefore prevent the other from, from occurring. So it deschedules that other event. Okay, um, today though, in this lecture, we're going to be talking about uh, explicit events. Events that are reified in the model as, as objects. They're shown graphically, and, uh, or at least their, their capacity to exist is shown graphically for dynamic events. Um, and there's two types of them so-called static events, which are called simply events, um, and dynamic events. Uh, dynamic events, for a given definition of a dynamic event, just as you have a class, person class, which defines personhood, a dynamic event defines, as it were, a class of, of actual events. And they can have multiple instances. A dynamic event might represent, for example, an impending uh, birth associated with, uh, with an animal. And you might have many, many animals scheduled to be born at any given point. Uh, or you may have dynamic events scheduled to add people into the model at certain future times. So static events have only sort of one scheduled firing at a time. They're, you, you schedule them, and maybe then they go off and they can be scheduled again, and then they go off. They have only one schedule associated with them. Dynamic events can have multiple instances. Um, and these instances disappear. They're one-time things that disappear after the event fire. Okay? Now there's some subtleties with this. Um, time is short, so I'm not going to go into this uh, too much detail, but um, uh, Suffice it to say, if you, have, um, if you have variable rate events, you have to be a little bit careful about how often those variable rates are, are recalculated. Um, and there's ways that you can disable an event programmatically and sort of re restart it. I may come back to that at some point. But I want to talk about event timing, um, because this, this is really much more operationally important to you in the short term. So a given event, if we think particularly about a static event, we can specify how it occurs as one of being a bunch of options. And these are some of the most common options. We can specify a, a rate, a Poisson arrival rate. So this event goes off periodically um, in some, with some chance of occurring every week or what have you. It can be a one-time event. You set it to go off at a particular time. You can specify as a calendar time within the model, of course, or within the simulated model, or, or as a time since the beginning of the simulation. Um, we could set it to go off at some an, at the initial time, perhaps, or some initial time, and then cyclically after that, with a certain timeout period. So we could set it off to go at time zero, time one, time two, time three, and every time.
time it stops, does some calculations, and puts some data out to a file and puts some data to a database. We can set an event to go off when a condition changes or to go off manually. We can just tell it, okay, fire off now. Okay. Um, so, um, right, and then there's some built-in events. So I'd like now to look at some built-in events and we can do this on the existing model. So let's go, um, let's go to person within our existing model and let's go to the agent tab for person, okay? So, um, so go to uh, the model we've been working on and we go to agent and you'll notice that within this if you scroll down, there's a thing called on arrival, on message receive, on before step, on step. Each of these is, is associated with some event. On arrival means the, the person here um, may have been going in some direction. They arrived at some destination. And when they arrive at the destination, this thing will suddenly fire off, um, to, to probably to route them to some new place or get them to take some action. On message received as well, there's a message received. Um, this is a particular simple sort of handling of it down here, forward the message to, but but um, you could specify more general behavior. On before step and on step we'll talk about, uh, talk about later. So these are some examples of event handlers. These handlers, when, when the event occurs, there's a bit of code in here that's executed, sort of wakes up and does its job, okay? So we arrive at a destination, we report that fact, or we drink water, or something like that. Um, we teach a class. Okay, um, so we also saw for main, there's some startup code. In fact, there's some startup code also for person. So if you go to general for person, there's startup code for a person, and there's startup code for, for main. Startup code for a person would be actions related to this particular person. Maybe when it first comes into existence, it records itself in a database, or it, um, it you know, uh, saves away some information about its initial state or something like that. So we can, can actually have something that occurs um, when it first comes into existence right there, and when it's destroyed, when this agent goes out of existence. Perhaps it's died, maybe it needs to finalize some records in the database about its life course. Um, and uh, we've already seen for main um, some startup events delivering a message to random person in the environment. So that's another example. Okay, so I've been talking about static events. Um, and maybe what we'll do, I didn't, I didn't uh, budget it in here for time, but let's double click on person. And um, uh, what we're going to do is, um, well, okay, I'm going to do it for main. Let's, let's go back and, and do it for main. And I will go uh, set an event within main. So if we go up to general uh, in the palette, we could see there's an event there. And I'll go drag an event in. And um, I'll say, um, you know, uh, beginning of year or something like that. So we've just dragged an event in, and we'll have some choices here in the lower, uh, the lower part of the screen. So you'll see there's two broad choices. Um, is this something that occurs once, or is it something that occurs multiple times? And I'll say cyclic, okay? It's going to occur multiple times. And uh, is it going to occur with some fixed timeout on some rate? some just Poisson arrival, a certain chance per unit time at any point, or based on some condition. I'm going to say a timeout. It's going to first occur at time zero and then a recurrence time of one. So at the beginning of each year, this thing is going to fire off if, if my time unit is a year, say. And um, if I were to put some action here, the obvious action might be, say, calculating the number of people within the population that are sick or something. I'll leave that for, for a later uh, lecture here, but what I'm going to say is uh, trace LN um, and, uh, and we're going to say, you know, um, uh, time is, um, is now and, and I'm going to say uh, 
I think it's time is, is the sort of relevant, yes, it, time is the sort of relevant um, thing here. So I'm just going to say the time is, is this certain thing. So periodically this event is going to fire off and it is going to be reporting the time every, uh, every time step. So I'm going to run this thing now and You'll notice it says time is zero, time is one, time is two, time is three, time is four. And meanwhile, these other things are occurring. People are getting infected, but it's reporting the time periodically at these fixed time units. So that's exactly the sort of process we might use to tally up totals within the population, tally up the number of people with certain characteristics, such as by infection status. And we'll see how that's done um, again at a later, later point. So that's a static event. There's, there's this beginning of year event. It has one schedule for that particular event. It has a, it has a sort of fixed set of things. If you think about the schedule, there's an there's a, uh, event every time that's put down. Every time it wakes up, it puts down a new one because it's cyclic for one year later, for one year later, for one year later. So this is a beginning of year event. It's a static event. They call it a static event. It's, uh, uh, there's not multiple copies of it. I want to contrast that with so-called dynamic events. Okay? Dynamic events, um, like static events, are associated with actions to invoke when they occur. There's not a lot of good if an event that wakes up and there's no action that occurs. Kind of wake, wakes up, smells the coffee, and goes back to sleep. Um, it doesn't have a lot of import for your model. Um, turns out there's there's something subtle having to do with, with scheduling of other events, but we'll leave that. Um, static events have only a single uh, single associated schedule with them, but a dynamic event, just like a person can have multiple instances, you get a personhood defined by the person class, and you can have multiple people. Here, a a dynamic event can have multiple instances, and each instance can be scheduled at different times. The schedules for each proceeds in parallel, and then the instances disappear after the event fires. They're sort of one-shot events that go up, um, and they do something and then disappear. Okay. Um, so when we have a dynamic event, we we define the dynamic event. Um, of this deer that will be born on, or who the, uh, the parents of the child that will be born nine months from now are. Um, so if you go look at a dynamic event, maybe we'll drag this in just so you can see what it's in, uh, what it looks like. We have this my dynamic event. You'll notice you specify parameters for this, okay? And then you specify an action. Those parameters get filled in. Information on this gets filled in when we this event. And then when it fires off later, that information is used by the event. So we create an instance of this event, perhaps at the beginning of the year, specifying who the parents are to the baby that will be, uh, be born in nine months' time. And then when the birth of the baby occurs uh, at that later time, um, it makes use of that information on the parents to put itself into a social network. Uh, so here we can separate, you know, the, the uh, event that leads to the baby's birth nine months later from the actual birth itself. So these dynamic events allow you to specify these parameters. 
and those parameters provide the action with the information with the information it needs to do its job when it fires off later. Okay, so um, so here we would uh, drag it in, and maybe we have a, a a dear birth that's specified, and in this case, what we're going to specify in this dynamic event is okay, is the deer that's going to be born female or male? Uh, what's its genotype based on its parents' genotype? And um, sort of what's the latitude and longitude at which it should be born? Something along those lines. And then there's an action which is going to occur when it is born, when this fires off later. It's being created at one point with this information. It's being fired off later uh, in a way that uses that information, specifying, okay, add this deer into the population at this latest time, this later time. So um, there's Two, two examples I want to draw on here, and then we'll have a break. Um, so the first one is a situation where we want to schedule a future birth at time of conception. So we have deer that may meet up at rut uh, during the mating season for deer, which is long before the, the, the fawns are, are born. And contacts between deer during rut can be simulated in the model. At the time of the contact, we can create a single dynamic event to schedule this future birth, this birth which occurs some months from now. And we save away the relevant information, information on the genotype of the baby based on the genotypes of the parents or what have you. Perhaps any information related to vertical transmission of chronic wasting disease, the stress level or what have you, aspects of the uterine environment. And, and then at a later point, the baby is actually born. The baby is born and makes, it saves away this information when it's born as its attributes. Another example might be, um, suppose we had, so this came up in a project for one of my students. Suppose we know the number of people uh, within a model, this is a model of diabetes and end-stage renal disease that are going to be born in this year, or that are going to become, excuse me, diabetic in this year. All we know is that it's a certain number during the year. We don't know when they develop diabetes during the year, early on, later on, what have you. But suppose further the model needs to, to, to care about that. So what happens at the beginning of the year is that a dynamic event is used to add people into the model or to, as it were, schedule people's births in the mo or, or development of diabetes throughout the year. So they're scheduled at different points in the year, they're scheduled to develop diabetes. It saves away the relevant information on that person to be added sometime during the year. So there might be, in the course of a given year, uh, 5,000 people who develop diabetes and they're spread evenly through the year. They're all pre-scheduled at the beginning of the year using that information, the number that will be born or will develop diabetes during the year. Pre-scheduled, and then during the year, in the course of the year, these dynamic events fire off and actually add the people to the model, actually add them in to the population of diabetics that's simulated. Okay, so uh, another example would be of immigrants coming in. You know that how many are going to come in over the course of, um, of of a month, but we don't know when they come in during the month. So here we might create a certain number of dynamic events. And each of those dynamic events will be responsible for creating a single person with some known characteristics specified via parameters and adding that person into the model. And, uh, and then the person is then added into the model at the scheduled time sometime during the month. So these are two examples of the use of dynamic events. Dynamic events, again, separate when the event is created, an instance event is created, and when it fires off. And when it fires off is when the action occurs, and it has to save information away to allow that, that firing off to have the relevant information to, to create itself. So those are events within the model. Uh, we've seen the most common one by far in my experience is static events, which have a fixed schedule. It can either be cyclic, they can occur a single time, if they are cyclic, they can occur with a certain timeout or a certain rate is very common. Um, or they can occur uh, on a single time basis, 
after either a timeout or with a certain rate. Those are the most common variations. However, dynamic events are something that's good to know about in case you're in the situation where you know when something will occur and you need to specify information for that later point when it does occur. Okay, so we're going to delete this beginning of the year event because we don't really need it around. And we're going to break now for uh, 10 minutes. Uh, when we resume, I think what we're going to talk about is a briefing on some of the Java that we've been using. What does it really mean? And give you some understanding about um, how references work within Java so you can write, write some of those Java snippets yourself. Okay? So uh, why don't we resume here at uh, 10 minutes from now, so uh, 45 past. Uh, no, uh, not directly, but there is a book which is currently being written, um, and you'll find copies of it online on uh, any logic. There's chapters of it now available, and it's by a guy named Andre Borshev. Um, and if you go online, you'll find um, uh, find pieces of it. Um, let me see uh, if I can. Uh, it's, I think it's. Perhaps Sergey can. can it take depends on the preferences yeah. of this person. Mm -hmm. yeah, there is no strict rules. I think, I think it's. I think that's how you spell it. B O R S C H E B. But uh, it's not reasonable. Really. Names yeah. get mangled when they can turn it to English. I think. 